High profile Freedom Convoy organizer Pat King is set to testify at the Emergencies Act inquiry. He is being sworn in right now. Let's listen in here. K-J-A-M-E-S-K-I-N-G. Do you swear that the evidence to be given by you to this commission shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Absolutely, so help me God. Thank you. Mr. King, uh, just to follow on uh, what your, your counsel has just said, if in, at any time during my questioning uh, you need uh, time to review a document, uh, don't hesitate to, to ask. Thank you. And um, I'm going to be asking you questions to give you an opportunity to uh, explain to the commissioner your involvement in the Freedom Con Convoy and also to give you a chance to respond to some of the evidence that's been led before the commission. I'd like to start with your uh, background. I understand you were born in Sault Ste. Marie. That's that right? correct, yes. And uh, how long did you live there? Till I was 18. <clears throat> and then where did you go? I moved out to Alberta where there was work and I've been living in Red Deer, Alberta ever since. And uh, what sort of work do you do? Oh boy, uh, I started out 22 years oil and gas, uh, worked my way up from a roughneck all the way up to a driller, to a frontline supervisor, to a flow uh, completions specialist. Um, and then I went back to university and I got my degree in occupational health, safety and environment, three year degree from the University of, uh, university of Alberta. From there, I took a position as a health and safety manager, or sorry, administrator, um, admin, and I would look uh, after upstream oil and gas uh, manufacturing. And from, I was a H2S instructor. Uh, I drove truck, I class one driver's license, uh, oversized loads. Uh, I also have a course, uh, I guess, uh, certificate as a logistics coordinator and a dispatcher. Thank you. Now, um, your counsel has indicated that uh, you uh, have been charged with criminal offenses, and I understand that a condition um, of your, your bail is that you are not allowed to use social media. Is that correct? Not allowed to do anything. I've had absolutely every right of a Canadian citizen stripped of me. My freedom of speech, my freedom of protest, my freedom of everything. So am I correct? You can't use social media? <laughs> no. You are absolutely correct. Thank you. So I'd like to ask you about your use of social media prior to your being charged um, uh, in uh, the latter part of February 2022. So if we can talk about the period, let's say, uh, 2019 to, uh, to March 2022, um, what kinds of social media did you use? Facebook, Instagram, that's it. I would never go on Twitter. That's a troll site. That's a joke. But Facebook and Instagram. Uh, TikTok? Just to, like, watch it. Uh, YouTube? Oh, I had YouTube, but uh, around the time that Donald Trump was being elected, um, I hold, and I actually hold this, a title, only him and myself are the only ones who have ever been banned from using any Google product. So I would never, never promote YouTube. And um, <clears throat> I understand you had a, a large uh, following on uh, social media. Is that correct? Uh, can you define large? Well, how big was your following? <laughs> it was big. Can you define big? <laughs> <laughs> it was international. It was big. Okay. 100,000, 200, 300, 400,000. That all depends on Facebook's algorithms, what they really say. But on my website and on my Facebook page, about half a million people. Thank you. Now, um, and I understand uh, on Facebook you would uh, host live events. Is that correct? I would do podcasts and I would 
do media. Um, and I'd catch interactions in real time um, for basically just to show it in real, in reality, and not some distorted mainstream media view. I'd show you what it was like in the real time. And I understand in 2019, you were involved in a convoy uh, called United We Roll. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. And uh, that was a, a protest over some oil and gas issues? That was a protest over Bill C-69 and C-48, which is the anti-pipeline and the anti-harbor moratorium, of which when we came to Ottawa, we were successful. Um, they reopened all the contracts after. And actually, since I've been incarcerated as of June uh, 2022, both those bills have been scrapped because they've been deemed unconstitutional. And Alberta finally got our pipelines and we're finally back to work again. And that, uh, th that convoy traveled from, was it Red Deer to Ottawa? Red Deer, Alberta, yeah. We left on February 14th and we like to deem it as the love of our country. On Valentine's Day, we left to stand up for our rights and exercise our democratic right to a freedom of peaceful assembly, to exercise our democratic right to a freedom to protest and to have our voices heard by the government. And who led that convoy? Uh, I was in the pilot truck myself and another person by the name of Angie Reed. Love you, Angie. <laughs> uh, Glenn Carey, um, he, he drove OP-22 or op um, the fire truck. We brought a fire truck. Um, he was an oil and gas um, fire suppression unit. Um, How many vehicles were in the car? Um, when it got to Wellington, we had about 170, 178, I believe. Okay. Was Mr. Bowder involved in that convoy? <laughs> involved in what way? Was he part of it? Sure. What was his involvement? fellow Canadian exercising his day. So I'd like to, uh, and so when you got to Ottawa, how long were you there? Uh, we arrived, I believe it was the 19th of February. Uh, we protested the 20th and 21st, and then we left that following Monday. And you went back to Red Deer? <clears throat> but I like to say that we left because the politicians acknowledged why we were there. They came out and said, we hear you. We're here to support you and we will back you and we will do everything we can to try and get your issues heard. Okay. Now I'd like to uh, come to uh, your involvement in the, uh, the freedom convoy if I could, um, sorry, just. Trying to keep track of uh, the time, but I won't, <laughs> doesn't seem to be working. The, um, how did you first get in, how did you first get involved in the, the uh, Freedom Convoy? Um, well, I'd already been social media. I'd already been doing my, my stuff that I always do. And, um, I had happened to see some people that were talking about the trucking industry and how they were about to be affected. And I know that our truckers here in Canada are the backbone of the economy in Canada. They move the freight. Their importance is a very under, um, Basically, they're, they're forgotten. They're kind of, yeah, they're a trucker, trucker, whatever, a trucker. But I knew the importance that if you stopped the trucking industry within, four, within 72 hours, you'll be brother on brother for a loaf of bread. And when they started to hit the truck drivers, and these guys have already been working diligently throughout this nonsense, um, 
we've seen it as a a direct attack against the Canadian economy. And not only a direct attack against the Canadian economy, but a direct attack to truckers are the guys that want to be left alone. They want to work in their trucks. They want to go do their job independently. Leave us alone. We won't create a stir. We won't cause a problem. We'll pay our taxes. And felt like they needed a voice. Did somebody contact you and ask you to get involved? Nope. What did you do to get involved? Well, um, I reached out to a few people and I asked if they'd like to, you know, let's talk about it. Who did you reach out to? I reached out to Chris Parber, Bridget Belton. Um, I reached out to, well, basically them, those two. And I said, I'd love to have you on my show. And I really think what you guys are about to, what you guys are wanting to do, I can be an asset because I've done this before back in 2019 and I can help you out in any way possible. And am I correct that uh, you then uh, had a Facebook live event on January, was it 13, 2022? If that's the date that you have, um, yes. And uh, as you, Mr. Barber, Ms. Belton, and I understand James Bowder were all on part of that. That's correct, yeah. And I, I'm, I, gotta, I gotta say there's people involved, but I've had my social media stripped. I've had all my videos gone. I can't recollect who was all there, but that sounds very close to who was there. I think there were some other people that were involved too. I think Dave Steenberg was one. Um, well, there was a couple, I think, Joe Jensen was one. There's a there's a few people, yeah. And um, during that uh, event, um, you talked about the the plan for a, a free a freedom convoy with those people who were with you. Well, we had thrown the idea around. We had <laughs> said, "Do you guys really want to do this?" And they're like, "Yeah, we should do this." And I said, "Okay, well, I'll do everything I can to help you." I'll give you the platform. I'll give you the voice. I'll allow, not allow, but I'd like to help you because I see what you're doing is absolutely prophetic. Finally, the hardworking blue collared people of Canada are going to stand up. And was this the, the first time you'd met Mr. Barber and Ms. Bilton? Yeah. And my information was you had about 3,000 viewers to that event. Does that sound right? If that's what you have a number, sure. I never, I was never concerned about the numbers. I could have two people in the room and it didn't matter. And have you, have you told us uh, why you decided to get involved with the Freedom Convoy based on uh, the statement you just made? Um, the reason I did it was basically I have gone through my own issues with these mandates and I have my own stance and my own beliefs on these mandates and what they're doing. And now I want everybody to remember a mandate is not a law. And they were pushing this and I finally found people that didn't want it pushed on them anymore. And what did you understand was the goal of the Freedom Convoy? To go and protest and exercise your democratic right to a freedom of peaceful protest, to a freedom of assembly, to exercise your voice and be heard by politicians of your concerns and your, <laughs> basically your, uh, your agitation with the way things are being controlled and later in january uh, the 21st uh, did you have another uh video stream that involved uh tamara lich uh, chris barber uh, james bowder and, and others you call that you bet and um, i understand uh, there was a general discussion of uh, what was uh, going to happen with the freedom convoy uh yes there was a discussion um it was basically 
like so organic like how are we going to do this who's going to do what who's going to be doing this who's going to be doing that i basically was a platform for these people to be able to like show who they are and by this time do you know if uh anyone in that group had uh contacted um any uh, members of a police force to uh tell oh, them yeah. that this was going yeah yeah um james bowder bragged about how he had ottawa around his little finger um that he had all the police and he had all the uh connections and i was like is that the same connections of when we did the united we roll and he's like yes I'm like oh okay um so i reached out because i have a rapport with pps i am i've traveled around canada protesting and speaking on public platforms and i've given my like i've basically set uh, a good communication between these officers so i reached out to these officers and said um we're looking at bringing another convoy to ottawa remember me and they're like oh yeah yeah we remember you pat I'm like it's good right I'm like oh yeah you're always great when you're here <laughs>